Hi, Aritra. It's great to see you again. Hi, Rosie. It's good to see you too. So, last time we discussed computational quantum chemistry, and today we are going to talk about molecular dynamic simulation, right? Yes, that's right. Great. So, what is the main difference between these two techniques? Where quantum calculations use the principles of quantum mechanics to describe the behaviour of atoms and molecules and give more accurate results on their positions and movements, MD simulations use classical mechanics to describe the movements of atoms and molecules over time and provide less accurate results on electronic properties. Where quantum calculations are done for a maximum of a few hundred atoms, molecular dynamic simulations are done for a few hundred atoms to a million atoms. Well, what are the benefits of using MD simulation? It is a powerful tool for understanding the behaviour of chemical systems and is used in many different areas of chemistry, including materials science, biochemistry and drug design. For larger material systems, where DFT will be computationally very, very expensive, MD simulations are performed. Also, you must do an MD simulation study to check the system's stability after autodocking, which is a useful technique for understanding the protein-ligand interactions. That's helpful. So, what are some of the software programs used for molecular dynamic simulation? There are several popular software programs used for molecular dynamic simulation, including Gromax, Amber, Charm, NAMD, etc., for biophysics-related studies, and for material science, the most popular package is LANCE. Each program has its own strengths and weaknesses, and the choice of program often depends on the specific research question being studied. Are there any specific theories or concepts that are important to understand when working with molecular dynamic simulation? Yes, of course. Like computational quantum chemistry, several important concepts are used in molecular dynamics simulation. One important concept is force fields, which are mathematical models used to describe the interactions between atoms and molecules in a chemical system. Force fields are used to calculate the potential energy of a system, which can be used to predict the motion of atoms and molecules over time. Another factor that affects the accuracy and stability of the MD simulation is the temperature and pressure control methods employed during the simulation. The choice of thermostat and barostat, as well as their parameters, can influence the choice of the time step. Furthermore, another important concept is the time step, which is the length of time over which the motion of the atoms and molecules is calculated. The time step is a critical parameter in molecular dynamics simulation, as it affects the accuracy and stability of the simulation. I can understand how the time step affects the accuracy and stability. Can you discuss this a little bit more? Yes, indeed. In MD simulations, a time step is an interval between consecutive updates to the positions and velocities of atoms or molecules in the system. The time step must be small enough to capture the motion of the atoms or molecules accurately, but also large enough to allow the simulation to progress efficiently. If the time step is too large, the simulation may become unstable, with the atoms or molecules experiencing unphysical oscillations or even leaving the simulation box entirely. However, the accuracy of the simulation also depends on the underlying physical model and the interactions between the atoms or molecules. In general, more accurate models and force fields allow for larger time steps, while less accurate models may require smaller time steps to maintain stability and accuracy. Thanks for explaining that. So, what are different force fields available? Various force fields are available there, for example, fixed charge atomistic force fields like charm, amber, opals, gromos, etc., polarizable force fields like gem, orient, pff, etc., coarse grained force fields like martini, and so on. Thanks, Haricha. Um, I have heard about Monte Carlo simulations. What is that? Although Monte Carlo and molecular dynamics use similar tools to collect data about the molecules in the system, 
but they work in different ways. Molecular dynamics uses a mathematical equation called Newton's equation of motion to predict how the molecules will move in the system. On the other hand, Monte Carlo uses a random or stochastic method to predict how the molecules will move. Instead of solving equations, it randomly tries different combinations of positions and velocities for the molecules and calculates how likely each combination is to occur. Compared with molecular dynamics simulations, Monte Carlo simulations demand less computational cost, but also using this, we cannot study transport properties like diffusion coefficients or viscosity. So, where can I find resources to start learning about molecular dynamics simulation? Several good resources are available for learning about molecular dynamics simulation. One good starting point is the book Molecular Dynamics Simulation, an interdisciplinary guide by Tamar Schlick. Another good resource is the website for the Gromax software program, which provides a lot of information and tutorials on how to use the program. If you want to learn LAMPs, I would suggest watching the official tutorial in terms of webinars available on their website. Furthermore, you can consider following a course on LAMPs provided by IIT Madras. Thanks, I'll definitely check those out. So, how do researchers validate the results of molecular dynamic simulations? There are several ways to validate the results of molecular dynamics simulations. One way is to compare the simulation results to experimental data such as X-ray crystallography or NMR spectroscopy. Another way is to perform multiple simulations with different starting conditions and compare the results. Additionally, researchers often perform extensive analysis of the simulation data to ensure that the simulation is stable and accurately represents the system's behavior. That makes sense. So, are there any limitations to molecular dynamics simulation? Yes, there are several limitations to molecular dynamics simulation. One limitation is the computational cost. As molecular dynamics, simulations can require significant computational resources, especially for large systems or long simulations. Additionally, molecular dynamics simulations are limited by the accuracy of the force fields used to describe the interactions between atoms and molecules. I see. That's good to know. Thanks for explaining all of this to me, Aritra. No problem, Rosie. It is always great discussing with you. Next day, we'll do some Hansen sessions on computational quantum chemistry. I guess you have already subscribed to my channel. If not, please do so because I'll upload all these discussions and some useful tutorials on my channel. Besides, if you have any doubts or suggestions, please feel free to reach out at www.aratoroy.live or comment on the YouTube video. Bye. Take care. Yeah, see you later.